Almost 18 years ago, Boeing delivered the last 717-200s to Midwest Airlines and Airtran Airways. This marked the end of a production line filled with promise, but it ultimately failed to capture the interest of airlines. Boeing only managed to sell around 156 of the 100-seater planes. Currently, the 717 is operated by five airlines, Delta, Hawaiian, Qantas Link, Turkmenistan Airlines, and the Spanish low-cost carrier Volotia. With 91 of the planes in its fleet, Delta is the largest operator of the 717. Now incredibly, a decade after being cancelled from Boeing's lineup, there are many airlines who are looking for available Boeing 717s, and even approaching the vice president of Boeing to fulfill their needs. But his reply is simple. That era is over and is never going to happen. So how did a plane that Boeing couldn't sell become an aircraft that airlines can't get enough of? Well, in 1997, Boeing acquired McDonnell Douglas for $13 billion. At that time, Douglas produced the MD-11 widebody and the MD-80 and 90 narrowbody. When the two companies merged, Boeing phased out all of the MD's commercial airliners, but it spared a new variant of the iconic DC-9 airliner called the MD-95 that was set to enter into service in 1999. To make it fit better into Boeing's portfolio of products, the MD-95 was rebranded as the 717-200. However, that wasn't enough to convince airlines to buy it. Even though it carried a Boeing's name, it was still a plane designed and engineered by a company with different thinking and philosophies. For airlines, there's a great financial gain to have an aircraft of different sizes and roles being operated by the same crew and serviced by the same teams. Even though the Douglas DC-9, the MD-80 and 90 still served as the workhorse of major airlines like American, Northwest and Delta, none of them would take the bait of an MD-95 branded as the 717. In fact, when American acquired Transworld Airlines in 2001, it sold all of its 717s. During the turbulent years of the early 2000s, the airline industry was hurting from 9-11 and spiking fuel oil prices, which meant many of the 717's potential customers were either in no financial position to buy any planes or they were dumping its aging MD fleet in favour of more fuel efficient planes like the Boeing 737NG or the Airbus A320. But what's interesting is that the people who did buy them, they loved them to bits. Many CEOs of airlines have praised the 717 for its durability and reliability. As with many things in life, what is old is new again. As the airline industry recovered, demand for air travel boomed while investors increased the pressure to reduce costs. The solution was simple, to upgrade to bigger planes. As a result, Boeing and Airbus both neglected the 100 and 150 seat market in favour of bigger, pricier and higher margin models. While this was happening, another phenomenon happened, the regional jet. During the 2000s, Bombardier CRJ and Embraer's ERJ made their presence felt in a big way by offering small 50 to 70 seat regional jets that allowed airlines to serve routes traditionally operated by turboprops with jets. Over time, airlines began to upgrade their regional jets with mainline aircraft. That's where the 717 jumps back into the picture. With around 100 and 130 seats, the 717 is a perfect size aircraft to take over regional jets. In fact, Boeing used to market the 717 as the full-size aeroplane for the regional market. The 717 was very much about how to avoid regional jets, which sacrifices seats. Now, with the addition of Airtrans Airways' fleet of 88 717s following the acquisition by Southwest, Delta was able to drop 200 regional jets from its fleet. Unfortunately for Delta, or anyone else wanting the 717s, they're pretty hard to come by. Delta currently operates roughly 60% of all the 717s ever made, while Qantas Link and Hawaiian, the second and the third largest operators, have no plans to retire their planes anytime soon. And while the airline, Volotia, has said that they will replace their 17 717s with the Airbus A319s, there still aren't that many of the 100-seater planes out there. Since discontinuing the 717, Boeing has also stopped selling the smallest variant of the 737, which is the 600. As a result, the company has abandoned the 100 and 150 seat market. That's where a plane like the Bombardier C-Series now comes in the picture. 
The CS100 is of a similar size to the Boeing 717, but with much greater range and fuel efficiency. According to reports, Delta's long-term plan is to eventually replace the older 717s with the 75 CS100 jets it has on order. Now, two decades later after it first flew, the Boeing 717-200 is still going strong. Even though Boeing didn't sell many of them, those that did buy the 717s can't get enough of them. And that's a sign of a great plane. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Boeing 717. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Boeing History Timeline, the Boeing 727.